Hey, welcome to Survival Crafts. This is a show where we share some how-tos in the world of traditional skills, survival, bushcraft, prepping, you name it. This is show number nine, and I'm Brenda Holder, your host. Well, finally, we're back to a little bit of a regular scheduled video sequence uh, on our, uh, our series. Uh, we've been really busy the entire month of March. I think I spent maybe three days at home, I guess. So um, we're back in the saddle, so to speak. One of the things that we're trying to do with our video series is we're trying to provide our viewers with the opportunity to see videos that aren't being done out there. And we feel that we have an opportunity to introduce something that's brand new. We've actually had some emails as well from some of our subscribers and other viewers requesting us to do some clarification on some of the other videos that they have seen. So we're doing our best to try and provide that for you. On today's video, Dave's going to be showing you how to do a heaving line knot. And once he discusses the practical applications for it, I think you're going to find it a really useful knot. Let's go join Dave. So today then, we're going to have a look at the heaving line knot. And the heaving line knot is a way that you can make a large knot, a weight, on one end of the rope, the running end of the rope, so that you can actually heave the line, or throw the line. This could be quite useful to anybody who's working with boats, and certainly when I learnt it, it was on a fairly long course with the Royal Engineers way back in the day when I was doing a boat operator's course and we had to learn many knots and one of the knots was this heaving line knot that enabled us to throw a line from boat to boat. So for canoers out there, I really like this knot. So I'm at the working end of the rope, which this piece of duct tape on the end of the rope signifies, and this is called the running end, the moving end of the rope. Here I have my bite in the rope. One span, which leaves me two spans of length of the running end. I'm going to now wind this around the loop nine times. Here I've wound the running end back up across the loop nine times. I now tuck the end into that loop, stand on the standing end of the rope, that is the end of the rope that's going to be affixed to something. If I pull up, the loop will tighten and hold the running end in place. Back out just so you can see. I'm gonna pull that down. I'm tugging on this end here. And that leaves me with my heaving line knot, just the weight in the other end of the, the rope, the, the throwing end. So to set up to throw this particular heaving line knot, I've got to affix the standing end, and I can tie that to a tree. I can tie that to my canoe or other craft I might be traveling in. In this case, I'm just going to stand on it. I'm going to back coil a length at my feet here, which will be enough to ensure that I get the rope across to the other side of the gap that I'm throwing across, or indeed to the shore that I'm throwing to when I cast this from my boat. So when I throw, this rope will free itself and just run out quite nicely from the coil at my feet here. So my hand here now, I place out like so. I actually 
separate my index finger out from the rest of my hand and I lay the running end with the heaving line knot in across there and I secure that with my thumb. I then take four coils around my other three fingers. One, two, three, four. I run my left hand out to separate the initial part of the, the rope that I'm about to throw. And now I'm in a position by placing my thumb on my finger to actually cast the rope, heave the rope across the gap or from my canoe. Now if I happen to be in a canoe that's running downstream, maybe out of control, what I can do is to put a stout stick into the loop at the top of the heaving line knot here. And then I can pull the heaving line knot tight on that stout stick. Now I have a weight an added weight to the heaving line knot itself, plus I have the point here of the stout stick that might catch on something on the shore and catch on some vegetation, anchor me to the shore a little bit like a grappling hook. So a variety of ways you could use that. And I've also used this with a good old tent peg as well. and I can set up the throw in the manner that I just showed you with the four coils. So we come indoors because our favorite filming spot suddenly got quite busy for some reason and we wanted to clarify the heaving line knot that we're tying for you. I'm using 9mm climbing rope this time and I'm more or less set up here. Here I have my running end and I have a bite set up in the actual rope which is about that long. Now this time I have quite an extensive amount of rope here that I'm going to wrap around nine times. So this is about one, two, three, four, five hand spans this time. Uh, because it's thicker rope, I need more rope to actually wrap around this point here. I'm going to start to tie this and I'm going to have my nine wraps around the bite. It's important to have eight or nine wraps. Eight or nine wraps will give you the optimum weight so that you can throw your rope the furthest distance. If you have less than eight or nine, you will not get the weight required to get your rope uh, at, at a decent distance. So let me take this and now start to wrap. So I've got, let me have a look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, tw
coming around for, this is more or less eight and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. That's good. I'm going to tuck the running end into the loop. Now I'm going to come down here and pull. There is the heating line not finished. Well, I hope you found that video useful and interesting and you understand some practical applications of the heaving line knot. Next week, we start on our much anticipated and much talked about video series. It's a three-part series on how to do the circle jacket. Some of you have already been emailing me about that much anticipated circle jacket series. That's coming out next week. It's going to be in three parts, so stay tuned those ones. Thank you guys very much for watching our videos. We really appreciate those of you who have subscribed and have uh, sent us comments. Some of you are a little bit shy. You've been sending me private messages, but you know, I'd encourage you to send the messages publicly because the questions that you ask are probably the same ones that many other people have to uh, ask as well. And remember, if there's things that you'd like to see us do, by all means, please drop us a line and we'll see if we can make it happen for you. We'll see you on the next video.